So this next section here is mainly focused on our future urologists. You may be called to evaluate patients in the hospital with scrotal swelling or scrotal pain. You may be asked to see someone in the emergency department with these symptoms. And while a lot of times maybe an ultrasound has been done, maybe it hasn't been done, or maybe you'd like to look for your own information, especially the hospitalized patients, maybe you're called to see them uh, before any other imaging or workup has been done. And so you wanna get some quick information at the bedside before you get any other consultative imaging. So let's talk a little bit about just some of the important things to look for on the scrotal ultrasound. And you are capable of these at the bedside. This is all pretty straightforward and pretty easy to answer at least immediate questions. This is a case of a 15 year old who came in with three days of scrotal pain. They've got a tender swollen left testicle. And what I want you to notice here is very heterogeneous because this testicle is dead. It's heterogeneous, it's got edema. Even with some low settings and power Doppler, we see no blood flow within this testicle at all. And when we try to look for any blood flow with pulse wave Doppler, you know, we get some artifact in here, but we really can't pick up any blood flow whatsoever. So this is a dead testicle. This is a late finding in testicular torsion. In the early stage, it may not look this bad, but we still may see loss or changes in the blood flow in the testicle itself. What you want to know is what does a normal testicle look like? And a normal testicle should have nice smooth borders, should be pretty homogeneous. You may see part of the mediastinum and the reet testis in here, but that should have a pretty characteristic look. When we apply color and Doppler, we should pick up flow and we'll take a look at what the normal waveforms should look like as well. And I'll point out, look at the scale here. So the testicle is a low flow organ, so we're gonna to have to have our scale settings on our color set to pretty low velocity settings so that we can pick up that low velocity flow that lives inside the testicles. So nice smooth borders, nice homogeneous appearance. That's what a normal testicle should look like and we should see flow within it. The technique, I don't know how much we're gonna to get to practice this in the lab. I don't know how many volunteer patients we have, but essentially you wanna place a towel underneath the scrotal sac to elevate it from between the legs and even apply some tension so that it doesn't kind of roll out of your way. And I'll often brace my hand on the patient's thigh and maneuver the testicle itself between the probe in the thigh to kind of hold it steady and provide some stability just so I can get the probe on it and get some images of it. And then just be systematic and compare sides. This really actually doesn't take that long to get some answers. It takes a little longer to be patient and get your color and your Doppler. Overall, a fairly straightforward exam. So we're gonna do some long axis views, look at the size and texture, we're gonna do Doppler, and then look at the flow patterns. So just reminders again, nice smooth borders, pretty homogeneous throughout the entire testicle. That's the first thing we should look for. And when we see flow, the colors don't matter that much in this scenario because it's kind of moving all throughout the testicle, not really towards us or away, but just remember your basic color Doppler settings and pay attention to that scale and the color gain. Because if you don't have this in the right setting and this scale says 20, you're not gonna pick up any flow in that testicle. If we use power Doppler, it's a little more sensitive, but it does have more artifact and direction doesn't really matter as much. And whether we find little dots of color with color Doppler or with power Doppler, we're then gonna wanna get some pulse wave images of those and get ourselves a tracing. Here we see some arterial spikes. And here we see a nice, just flat venous waveform. And we'd like to identify an arterial and a venous waveform in the testicle of interest if torsion is one of our concerns. Here are just some examples of torsion. So here we see flow on this side. We've got color box across the whole thing. There's no flow over here. In this example, this testicle has become swollen and there's not really any flow. And we want to see flow centrally and throughout, not just little bits on the edges that doesn't really count that may be peripheral flow. So the longer it's been going on, on, the more swollen it may be. It may not be very swollen early on, so that's one of the first things to look for and then do your color Doppler analysis. That's really it. That's the main emergent thing that you're going to look for. And you may, again, get called because the patient's having pain or having swelling, and you can quickly at least make sure the testicle looks okay and has flow and torsion looks unlikely. You really have to have a steady hand. So again, use that bed sheet, stabilize the scrotal sac, be systematic in your evaluation, and remember, adjust your velocity scales, especially if you're seeing a pediatric patient, prepubescent patient, the velocities are gonna be lower and you need to know how to adjust those. So that's really it. With some of that basic information and some basic ultrasound skills, you should be able to answer a lot of the questions you're asked at the bedside in, in a matter of minutes.